Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Adam here. Uh, we actually have a different star field now. I used the texture replacer mod and got something a little bit better. On today's episode, though, we have some sort of serious emergency stuff. I realized what the problem was with my uh, my relay station. It's not that it's out of communications, uh, you know, it wasn't just a temporary it's out of communications because Kerbal's fa Kerbin's facing the wrong way or something. Uh, it's more serious. It actually, uh, I, I kind of forgot how the interstellar mod works and I didn't realize that I disconnected the heat sinks from this, the radiators. And so it has way too much waste heat. It's dissipating now because it closed the solar panels, but it shut everything down when it did that. Which means I have no way of regaining communications with this thing without sending a mission out here. So, we have to do that. I'm actually going to send a manned mission, because I don't want to have to worry about remote tech nonsense right now. I just want to get this thing done. I've built a ship that has a part that should be able to fix this, for now at least. It only needs to work for a month, so I think this will be able to dissipate the heat. Um, it's basically just my MUN launcher with a command pod and stuff stuck in here. Uh, we'll see the part better when we get out there. There's a, a, a lander can, and this has some radiators on it. So I am hoping we'll be able to get a rendezvous. It's going to be a little bit hard to do because of the speeds involved out there. I'm not really good at rendezvousing that far from Kerbin. It's a lot easier when you're deeper in the gravity well, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and set our target and launch into the plane of the target. The space station has an inclined orbit. That's going to be a problem if we have to make up that delta V. So launch into the plane of the target, set, gauge autopilot, let's do this thing. So hopefully this will work correctly here. I'm not gonna like hold my breath, but all right, slowing down. Is this gonna launch completely automatically, or do I have to press space? It seems like I used to have to press space to get it to go. I did not press anything but keep my hand near space. You, whoa, that was terrifying. Oh, this is bad. Okay, mate. What was that light? I have no idea what that was. Hopefully it was nothing important falling off of the rocket here. Uh, I don't see anything important that looks like it's fallen off. So I guess we'll figure it out when we get a little higher here. So our uh, thrust to weight ratio stays pretty high here. Ew, that was scary too. Um, our thrust to weight thrust to weight ratio stays pretty high through this stage so hopefully by the time we kick over to this nuclear engine we'll be high enough up in the atmosphere that it will not matter a uh, little concerned about that this thing's relatively heavy so we'll see once we get into space it won't be a problem it should have fuel for days up there for the amount of stuff we're gonna do Jeb has his life support um, I believe I actually put enough for a little more than a month on here yeah, well, not a month, like three weeks. Almost. So he's got about three weeks worth of food and air and whatnot, so that should be more than enough time to get this station up and running. I wanted to send a manned mission for two reasons, really. One, so I didn't have to worry about remote tech, and the second being I wanted to make sure that if there were any problems, that anything that needed to be repaired, at least we'd have a Kerbal there, so if there's any chance of it being repaired, we could you know, repair it. Now, I am getting more and more concerned about this. Our apoapsis is still going to be pretty thick in the atmosphere here at the rate we're going. Oh, come on, ship. I want that mainsail so bad. I think we might be okay. That's going to get out of the atmosphere by the time the time runs out, so it should be good. nerve-wracking stuff. I haven't really launched a lot of really heavy stuff. This isn't a super heavy craft by any means either, but it's heavier than what I've been launching. Alright, so yeah, we should be... Yeah, we're outside of the atmosphere. We should be good then. 
just a question of if there's going to be enough fuel left at this point. All right, looking good. Get our little solar panels going here. Awesome, that was a nice clean separation. It doesn't look like anything's broken. So you can see there's a lander pod here. Uh, this has the radiators. What are they? I don't remember what they're even called. Uh, yeah, just small heat radiators. So hopefully those will be sufficiently good to get the stuff done that we need to get done. I'm not really sure how to go about rendezvousing here. Uh, seems kind of difficult. I suppose it wouldn't have been a bad idea to try to launch exactly for a rendezvous here. But I don't really know exactly how to do that even at this altitude, even with Mech Jeb, because tiny little variations in thrust make a really big difference at these kind of heights, because we're not going to be going very fast. The good thing about that is if we get relatively close, it's easy to make up the difference by burning and whatnot. So hopefully that will work out. Uh, our apoapsis is definitely going down now. We have we have a, pr a slight problem here, maybe. Is this thing too heavy in the front or something? Why? Mechjev is burning off of tart. Why are you doing this? It's burning towards the ground for some reason. I'm... I guess it's still in control because it went back to where it was. I was a little bit concerned that it didn't know what it was doing, but it seems to. You don't see the moon look like that often. That's kind of cool. Like a little itty bitty sliver there. I like that. Uh, we're going to be reaching our apoapsis real soon here. Okay. I don't like this. I'm overriding you, Mechjeb. I think it's because it's trying to get our, uh, whatchamacallit right, inclination, but I don't like what it's doing to our apoapsis, so I'm going to manually hold this here, which means I have to constantly fight against Mech Jeb for a little bit here, but I do not like what it's doing. Yeah, we went past our apoapsis, so well, we're going to be re-entering the atmosphere before too long here, game. That has me worried. This thing does not have an incredible amount of thrust. Well, we're gonna just hope for the best. Nothing with this EVE program has gone well, really, so far. The launches went okay, I guess, but after that, it's just kind of been a disaster. I probably should have drained all the fuel from this because I really don't need fuel. I could set up refueling missions later. Yeah. Hopefully I'll get good at rendezvousing at these kind of altitudes. I want to have some ability to uh, refuel. I'm going to be sending up these the little RCS tugs that I use for this kind of stuff. I'm be sending up one or two of those to that station to actually assemble it. Okay, we're gaining apoapsis again. That's good. Um... I like to send that kind of stuff up because uh, it just kind of makes it simpler to manage. We're going to be re-entering the atmosphere in a second. God. Well, fingers crossed. We're in the atmosphere. S silly ship. Go faster. I wanted to make sure I had enough fuel to deal with the transfer, but I think the extra weight up here... It's causing me some troubles. We'll see. We got the sunrise, though. That'll be nice. Our apoapsis is still increasing, as is our periapsis. That's going to be rising out of the planet soon, so we'll probably be all right. We definitely need to really start gaining some speed here. This this needs to go up much faster because. If we get deeper into the atmosphere, we won't be alright anymore. It's going quick, but... Could go a lot quicker. Alright, so our apoapsis is going to be as high as it's supposed to, but we're going to have a lot of... How is it even going to correct for this nonsense? I don't know. 
What does our orbit look like now? Uh, we're going to re-enter the atmosphere, Mech Jeb, you moron. Disengage autopilot. God damn it. This thing has no idea what it's doing. If it can't thrust on the first go, it just goes crazy. This is this is bad. This is bad times. We're losing it's alright if we lose stuff on that side. I just wanna get our apolapsis and periapsis switched around here. This is wasting so much fuel. Alright, we're gonna be cruising back out of the atmosphere in a minute. I think I may have fixed this. And we're gaining altitude again. I'm going to go a little past 100,000. Maybe like 110 just to make sure. Definitely not ideal. We're using a lot of extra fuel for this. The mech jet was going to kill us all. Okay, there we go. We'll call that good because we're nearly out of the atmosphere. Uh, why are we in time warp still? I don't want to be in time warp, Mech Jeb. So get rid of that. Let's do maneuver planner. Fix it this time, Mech Jeb. Okay, at least we only have a hundred and two meter burn now. That's not terrible. I believe that's another satellite there. I really like that mod, the visual enhancements mod, especially with a more realistic looking sky, because you can actually make out what stuff is. Where is Eve? We should be able to see Eve if we look towards the sun. Where did the... Alright, the light from the sun is coming here. There it is. So, Eve... Where are you, Eve? Hmm. I don't rightly know where Eve is. Oh, there it is. It's way down there. Alright, so at least we've made orbit here, pretty much. I think we might even technically be in orbit. Where's my orbit info? No, we're not quite in orbit. It's not going to do time warp until we get um, out of the atmosphere here. So Mech Jeb is definitely a, a mixed bag. This thing weighs... I, I use this sort of stage to launch some of my satellites recently. It worked a lot better for that, because this stuff all weighs a lot more. It should have the Delta V required. I mean, this thing could make it to Duna with what it's got, so hopefully it will be able to do this. Alright, burn, maybe? Yeah, there you go. And we now have a periapsis that's not in the core of the planet, so that's good. And almost orbit, almost orbit, come on. Come on, orbit, there we go. Alright, so we should be safe. I probably should have just burned to my target altitude. That might have gone a lot better, actually, but you live and you learn. So, what I really need to do here. I want to get rid of this custom info window thing and I want to just make how do I delete the window? Custom window editor. Um surface info we want to keep, orbit we want to keep. Let's delete that window. And do I have the ability to just create a new window that is for target stuff? Apparently not. So, target, and we want target related stuff. So distance to target would probably be good, closest approach, uh, I don't really care about that stuff so much, relative velocity would be good, and that's probably enough info for that window. Alright, get out of my face. 
Where did my target go? Why are we not targeting? Set as target. Alright, so now we're gonna do some maneuvery stuff and figure out how to actually get this synced up well enough. Now I think we had I mean we have to do this relatively quickly. I think the way to go I can't just do this because I doubt I'm gonna be able to accelerate quickly enough to actually catch up. What does that get us for an approach? 385 kilometers. See, I have a hard time believing we'd be able to accelerate quickly enough to actually catch up with the target in any sort of meaningful way. Uh, I'm going to give this some thought, and I'll meet you when we make a burn. Alright, I got it within 156 kilometers, which is not great, but we're going to try it and just see if we can match velocity with the target when we get out there. We're kind of in a hurry. I don't need to be orbiting around for like 700 billion years. Now, the problem we're probably going to run into is that Mechjeb is precise, but it's not necessarily going to be as precise as I need it to. Even RCS fuel at this range makes a pretty big difference in your actual final approach and all that. So I'm just kind of concerned about that. But, uh,. I'm going to give Mechjeb RCS power here so it can hopefully do what it needs to do. Are these even working, these RCS ports? I haven't used the. I think these are from B9. They look a lot better than the stock ones, but I haven't used them before. Using very few stock parts now. A lot of stock parts are pretty ugly, in my opinion. This is a decently sized burn. Assuming the other burn is around the same size, it might be a little hard to get Jeb home. <laughs> might be a little. I mean, we're going to have a ton of RCS fuel. Like, well, not a ton, because when we separate, we're only going to have that RCS fuel, but. Or that RCS fuel, I suppose I should say. But hopefully that will be enough between what's left in this engine and that. It'd be a shame if we had to send a rescue mission after our rescue mission. That would be pretty unfortunate. But one problem at a time. I don't know how much fuel it's going to take to deorbit from there. It usually doesn't take a ridiculous amount if you plan it well. And of course we have an atmosphere to work with here too, so that's probably going to help somewhat. Now I gave him the extra food and life support because I wanted to be able to stay on the station for a few days once we get out there just to make sure things are running well before we leave. Um, not that there's much Jeb can really do if if it's not, but at least we'll have somebody there to, to keep an eye on things. I still have to launch some other satellites or set up some sort of extra relay system so we don't lose contact with this thing. Uh, that's actually what I intended to do while those probes were on route, but kind of ended up with a more pressing issue because uh, I have to fix the station I can't just switch to another station like I would just track with something else but the problem you run into there is that if I do that I will have no way of telling the other probe to regain you know to change its uh, its target those are targeting specific dishes and I can't tell them to target a different dish so we have to fix the dishes that it's targeting so that's a little bit of an issue. So what we should probably do here is get in a maneuver ready to match velocities at closest thingy and at closest pro approach to target. See how well we end up doing with this. and then I will have to fine-tune and probably manually fly in from there because I don't think Mechjeb's going to be able to deal with the kind of adjustments we're going to have to make out there. A long burn. These nuclear engines, I'm really glad to have Mechjeb when I'm doing one of these because by golly they take a long time to do their job. Alright, so we're coming up on the end of the burn. We can get a look at the results we got. It's probably not going to be perfect. 
I mean, not that it was perfect anyway. It was like a hundred kilometer separation, but I think that's manageable to fix. It's gonna be complicated. Oh god, it's flipping out. That's really not helping, Mech Jeb. Damn you, Mech Jeb. Damn you. Well, what did we get? We ended up. That doesn't seem like we got any encountered. Ah, oh, damn it, it's off. That's a lot of kilometers. Well, I suppose the thing to do is see what will this do? This will match our velocities and we try to fine tune it from there. This sucks, man. Let's turn off the RCS because that's actually screwing up our whatchit whatchamacallit at this point, and it didn't seem to help Mech Jeb at all. I should probably turn on the RCS balancer. I actually found that that worked pretty well in the old version of Mech Jeb, at least. Don't know how it's going to work here, but... How long is this? This is taking like a day to get out here. This better work. We really better be able to make this work, because... I'm nervous. I don't want my ships flying by into wherever they're going to end up going. Is that Orion's belt? There it sure looks like it. I think these are real stars. I'm not really sure. I didn't read a lot about it, so... Is that Minmus? I actually see Minmus pretty darn good out here. You don't usually get a... Oh, no, that's the Mun. That's Kerbin. Okay, I'm all disoriented. I was like, you don't usually see Minmus like that. It doesn't look green, either. We are so high up. The clouds are flickering. We're so high up. Right, so where is this stupid station right now? Alright, it's super duper far away. But it, we're actually in a slightly higher orbit, so this might be somewhat fixable. I kind of regret putting this station out here now. It made sense to me at the time, but rendezvousing just sucks out here. Now their velocity is 400. Mine's going to be about the same. We might be able to just kind of like smidgen our way over. It's not going to be fuel efficient to do that. I'm going to mess with some maneuver nodes and see what we can get out of this. We're like way off target of this maneuver again, too. Mech Jeb is getting sloppy here. So I'm going to mess with some maneuvers, see if we can figure out something to make this work. Alright, so after a bunch of screwing around and uh, using my target distance thingy, burning this way, that way, you know, trying to see which closed the gap, what uh, made it worse, I ended up getting a pretty good uh, approach here. It looks like we're going to be sub one kilometer now. Uh, I'm doing post commentary now because all of this took a really long time to do. It was a lot of uh, fine tuning my approach, and then I would have to um, I would have to wait because everything takes forever out here. And uh, as you can see, we're at like two days on this mission now. Um, I used I did not use the maneuver planner very much. Um, I used it just to execute some maneuvers, but basically most of this was manually done. I do use the smart ASS a lot because uh, it helps me, you know, just hold relative to a target and whatnot. Uh, makes it a lot easier. I was very relieved to see the green targety thing. Like when I actually saw that, I was very happy because that means we can get this done. Uh, docking is still going to be a little bit hard just because the RCS balance. I don't think it's going to be that great on this thing because it's it's pretty heavy on the end there, and uh, not as much on the bottom. So. But one problem at a time here. So we're going to be loading physics in a second and boom. So that thing is physically existing relative to us now. And we're at 836 meter close approach. So um, I probably could have used the maneuver planner thing to actually, uh, at this point, it probably would have been wise. To use it to automatically do some of this stuff in terms of matching velocities because it does do a pretty good job of that i'm manually trying to do this and i don't have all of the information as to what where I, where the optimal place would be to burn 
because uh, I don't I don't know all of the different directions you know that things are going. So um, probably would have been good to have Mech Jeb do that much. And now it's just pretty much a waiting game. You know, slow down relative to the target, burn towards the target again. And for whatever reason, I always have a lot harder of a time rendezvousing way out outside of like in low gravity situations. Um, whether it's around Minmus, you know, far from uh, you know, a little ways out from Minmus, or way out here, uh, our orbital speed is only like in the 400s here or something like that, 400 meters per second. So when you're going this slow, a tiny adjustment makes a big difference. You don't get like there's a, there's more of like a gross margin that you get out of being closer to Kerbin, so if you're in like a 100 kilometer orbit, I always find it a lot easier to deal with just because um, it, it seems like the game is more forgiving in getting, especially in getting the actual encounter. And so here I'm just burning, um, trying to get my uh, green directional thingy inside the little target reticle on the, the nav ball there, or at least close to it, so I know I'm closing in. So we're getting sub 100 meters now, so it's flickering around a lot. That's another annoying thing that happens out here is that due to the low speeds, the physics engine really doesn't cope very well with this, so you get bouncing numbers just constantly. So we're going to be somewhere around 40 meter when we close in on this one. But it's like even rotating the ship is enough to mess up the, the amount, which in real life... You know, you're not adding any extra force to your orbit by doing that, so it's kind of silly, but... Alright, so... We got actual meterage up on the, the targety thingy now. I was just wanting to check my time there, close the alarm. And I'm doing this nice and slow, instead of doing a ridiculous amount of time warping, uh, I want to do this nice and slow so that I don't accidentally go flying and, and th this would have been a perfect scenario to use the match velocities because there's one thing Mech Jeb is really good at it's that and I'm just burning away from the target and you can actually see that my little uh, my my retrograde marker is moving away from the retrograde marker there which is not good because it means that we're going to be sliding past this pretty much if I had just match velocities using Mech Jeb would have made that a little bit easier so our closest target distance is now going up because of my my maneuver there but we'll just flip around and burn towards it again get our velocities moving towards each other see those solar panels folded up there I'm just giving tiny little bursts trying to not get carried away here so you kinda see like what is Meg Jeb is keeping me p pointed towards the target, but the target is kind of sliding to the right relative to me. And if I just keep using the, the positive and negative target, then it's going to be real hard to actually close that gap. But I'm going to start using some RCS to try to slide with it here. Get us moving in the relative same direction here. And... I'm not as worried about where my target marker is necessarily relative to um, my direction of travel quite yet just because at this point I'm really just trying to even see where I'm going to be docking which is really hard for some reason even though we're far from Kerbin it seems like it's a lot darker out here I guess because the planet's not reflecting all the light and I don't have any lights on this which I probably should have put some lights on this but I didn't think of that so another lesson learned all right, so now we're getting our direction of travel pretty much right on the little pink thingy down there. Closing in pretty quick, two and a half meters and slowing down. My target thingy moved away again. So it's just a lot of fiddling like this. So uh, I'm gonna cut ahead a little bit until we actually get into docking because you pretty much get the idea of closing the distance here. And I take a moment here to appreciate the view and actually I'm, what I'm really trying to do is uh, swing the camera around far enough that I can see where the docking port is and try to catch it. This is a little bit hard to do sometimes setting targets. It seems like you have to get real close before you can do it too. But we got our target set now so now it's just a matter of kind of sliding underneath the station and I'm um, using the 
I forget the name of who makes this, but the docking alignment mod, uh, something fish. I can't, Nova fish? I can't remember the name. I'm, I apologize, but, um, using the docking alignment thingy, I'm not real worried about how this aligns up, aligns yet, because I'm going to be, like I said, sending up some tugboat things that I use for these. Like, they're, I call them worker bees, but they're just little worker drones that have RCS fuel only, and their only purpose is to move components of stations around and help me. I used them a lot in my other series where I would unload a module for a base or something like that from the transport vehicle. And uh, it's a lot easier than trying to dock some of the big things more precisely because you can separate the large rocket and only use this RCS. It's like a portable RCS cluster, pretty much. So we'll just keep sliding on over. Alright, so we're approaching the bottom side here correctly. Um, just trying to stop my rel cancel out my relative velocity using the RCS here now and uh, you can see the f solar panels all folded up and sad so uh, get this thing turned around here real quick Try to, I don't know why I was changing the camera I was trying to change to the chase view here but I hit the C button instead of the V button or whatever one of the more challenging parts of docking I always find is just getting a good camera angle. It's not as hard with this ship as with some of the girders that I dock later. Uh, the girders are really hard because they're long and it's kind of hard to tell when you're going to be like scraping, when you should actually be in contact. I always find that a little bit hard. So what I'm doing now is just canceling as best I can my velocity so we're just in a station keeping here and then I'm gonna flip the ship up and get it in the right orientation to actually dock and when I do this uh, when I translate the ship this way uh, I turn off the RCS because I do not want um, any extra energy going into what we're doing here than we need so and as you can see here, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing exactly how far away we are. I come real close to the antenna. Um, I turned on the, the positive target lock here just so that I could try to get the translation done because this ship actually is a little awkward to control due to the RCS placement too. So wanted to have a little bit of assistance so I only had to really worry about turning the ship and not worry as much about keeping it aligned. And this ship is a lot more massive, I think, than the station component that's already up here. So when we get into magnet range, it should just pretty much, you know, pull it right in. It's it's not like when you're doing a really big station and everything fights against each other. This thing weighs little enough that it shouldn't be too much of an issue, I think. So as you can see here, we're just kind of turning, kind of sliding our rear end around this thing. And... Once we get relatively aligned here, I'm going to cancel out that slide as best I can. Kind of going down now too. I did a little bit much, a little bit much. And it's hard to tell right now if the station is tumbling or not. It has a really bad tendency to tumble. I think it is tumbling looking at that antenna there. Um, it's not such an issue with this, like I said, the magnets are going to kind of counteract any of that, but it becomes a bigger issue in later episodes when I dock more stuff. So I'm trying the RCS balancer here to see if I can get a little bit better of control, but for whatever reason I find the RCS balancer to be pretty crappy right now, so get rid of that. Right. This was a tense moment here for me. A lot of stuff is riding on this docking happening here. I wasn't even concerned about the rotating the alignment correctly, the the roll here. And this is the part where things get hard to tell how aligned you are if you don't have the docking alignment thing, which I actually didn't pay that much attention to. Yeah, the station is tumbling. Look at it tumbling. So that just adds I have no idea why this thing tumbles so bad, but it's been a constant problem every time I come out to the station. It's just tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. And I'll do the time warp to try to freeze it, 
and it just starts tumbling again. So at this point I'm just waiting for the magnets to start picking up. I don't care that much about perfect alignment like I said because all that needs to happen is the magnets need to pick up. We'll undock and redock later to actually fix the alignment. I just want to want to get this thing done and oh and there we go yay so <laughs> problem solved the electric charge is running out now the electric charge is running out because those antennas are back on and the large solar panels are not functional so let's get this out and I believe the station is saved now So this should be more than enough radiator for what we need to do here. And close down all this extra stuff. And what I'm trying to do here is to see if the waste heat is under control and it looks like it is. So things are good again. We get the large solar panels redeployed. See how that affects the waste heat. And there we go. Mission accomplished, Jeb. You have a tough job. Jeb is the man. Now, the reason I, I wanted this big RCS tank, I think I explained it earlier, was that I'm going to have uh, those RCS tugs here, and this is how they refuel. So, I will have plenty to rearrange things. I'm not super worried about the alignment of docking ports and stuff now. Just as long as it's docked, I'll fix it later. It's pretty much what I was going to do. And I was just monitoring the waste heat. Uh, I think it's already down. Yeah, it's already gone down a couple of points. So everything's good to go until we add more solar panels. Who knows what that will do? But um, I'm just making sure that all of our probe stuff's all set up here still. And it is. So mission accomplished. I'm going to monitor the situation here for a little bit. We can see our signals going off to the EVE probe. So I'm happy. And uh, what I'm going to do, I, I basically just stayed for a while and made sure that I, I kept seeing the waste heat going down. And uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good. Okay, so at this point, I wanted to go ahead to the tracking station and switch over to uh, my EVE probes. Just to make sure that they are indeed within communications again. And it sure does look like they are. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Actually, select one here. Now, for whatever reason, the uh, the game kind of screwed up here. It re it removed my encounter. Uh, I don't really know why that happened. I had an encounter when these left the sphere of influence. You would have thought it would have stayed the same, but looking here, I no longer have an encounter. So. What we're going to have to do is some uh, maneuvering a little further out here to try to fix that because I don't know what happened, but it decided we don't have an encounter. So I'm going to set up maneuver points and uh, we'll adjust things once we get closer. My target set, that helps. So yeah, we'll adjust things once we get a little closer. Um, they should have plenty of fuel, I think, to get this done. I'm a little concerned looking. I only have 1,700 Delta V left on this thing, so hopefully none of these maneuvers will be too expensive. And, uh, and I, I'm a little frustrated that this happened. I, I don't know why exactly. So I'll get some maneuvers set up and get the timer going on them, and uh, we'll be back. All right, now we have our uh, maneuvers vaguely set up. So I wanted to take care of a couple of other things. I've been kind of monitoring this. This is going down uh, the waste heat. So the radiators are more than adequate to deal with what we need to deal with here. Uh, looks like there's nothing really left from a crew report. Uh, let's just do an EVA if we can here. What we got here EVA report, nothing. Because we got everything we're going to get out of that. Now let's be pretty careful here. Just want to kind of inspect things, even though there's really no reason to, because we see everything from in there, but just kind of seems cool. Floating around. Look at, look at Jeb being a badass. That's all I have to say. Should turn him. Right, I think we have to go like that. 
And I want to get my screenshot of Jeb's repair mission here. Because that was fun, wasn't it, Jeb? Jeb is a freaking hero. So, now we have to go back to the planet and do some uh, infrastructure work that I originally had intended to do. Uh, basically get things up and running in terms of have a couple more relays down there. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do ground-based facility of some sort or if I'm going to do space-based facility. Just trying to not crash into stuff right here. A little hard getting inside that fairing. Alright, so how much Delta V does this thing have left, I guess, is the question. Uh, Delta V stats... 800, that should be more than enough, I would think. Uh, probably want to check out how's our RCS fuel. Probably leave some of this behind, really. Ah, oh, the stupid thing started rotating. Oh well. Well, I think. Oh, what are we at now? Yeah, that's continuing to go down. So we are good. Jeb, you did it. You did it. Let's go ahead and get the heck out of here. That's your spot back off nice and easy start plotting our maneuver home yeah uh, you know what actually there is one thing I want to do before we go I want to kind of fix the uh, orientation of this I don't know if I backed off far enough that that is going to work is uh, they are working okay before we leave come on there you go. Spend time warping to straighten that out. Uh, I want to fix the orientation of this docking port. When I started this, I was just kind of concerned about getting it lined up. Now I actually want to fix it, and I want to figure out how I'm going to fix it exactly. I think I want one of these going this way. So let's go ahead, just in case any sort of spontaneous disassembly decides to happen here. Save and undock. I don't know why it keeps controlling from the wrong thing, but it does. So let's just back up. Is it really not going to undock? Or no, we are undocked. I just can't see. Okay. Okay. Set his target. Control from here. All right. How are we going to line this up? I guess we have two aids here now, so. I would like to find controls, please. That's a little crazy. Alright, so that little swingy thing indicates our alignment, I believe. I have not actually utilized this thing. Definitely off target here a little bit. Uh, how do we fix it? Did not mean to go quite as far down as we did there, but... We'll leave the magnets. We'll pretty much take care of things from here. Jeb doesn't want to go till the job is done and all that. Yeah, that's going to be a nice alignment, I think. This is way better than how I previously did these alignments. A lot easier. Come on, Magnet. Oh no, the thing's drifting. Why did you start... I wasn't even paying attention to that. Back off again. <sighs> Space Station. Well, I should be able to torque this thing now just a little bit. Uh, which way do I want to go is the question. Oh man, our alignment's getting all kinds of screwed up. Come on. You want to go downwards? No, downwards is crazy. Okay, this this is crazy. Which direction do I want to go then? This way. I don't know why things have to drift so ridiculously, but they feel the need to. All right. 
right, we'll use our little time warp cheat yet again. I don't feel bad about it, because things really shouldn't be drifting like this anyway. So, let's go ahead and do our little twisty twist. And I'm just going to count on magnets here. Come on. Don't want to collide, but I don't have a good way of really translating this, so... My RCS design on this was not the best. And how are we looking here? That's a line pretty good, I think. It's definitely not perfect, but I think the RCS tug that I send up will be able to do better. So, let's go ahead and... Update our save, undock, control from the wrong thing yet again. Now this time we're leaving for real. So long station, hopefully Jeb will never have to come back. Everything should be able to be automated from here. Alright, so let us turn off the RCS so we save that fuel in case we need it. And let's go with orbit retrograde. Take a look at what we're looking at here. Alright, so how do I want to get home? Now, we're going to be coming in at ludicrous speeds if I'm not careful here, so... Definitely want to do this with a little bit of a... Uh, finesse in terms of arrow braking. It's going to be crazy speed. I go for like 40,000. That's not 40,000. Got 48. I don't want to take too many turns around. 39 is perfect. Let's actually get rid of this thing and just have our good friend Mech Jeb execute the next node. And we're on our way. So long, station. And we have plenty of uh, Delta V to get this done, so things are looking up. How much time did we end up doing here? I can't really tell except by the food, I guess. I think that's going to be like a three-day mission by the time we're done. That's not so bad. Oh yeah, I never activated the engine, did I? Oopsies. Get our orbity info up here. We can close the alarm clock down for now. All right. And he is going to make it home. That couldn't have gone too much better, could it? We have to come up with a name for that station at some point. Something about it being cursed, because it's a cursed station. I believe it's haunted or something. Probably haunted by the original Jeb. Since my first Jeb died. Alright, well, let's just cruise on home. Oh, look at you, Eve. We're going to touch you soon. How long is this going to take? Orbital time to parry ops is 16 hours. Yeah, so this is going to be like probably a five day mission by the time all the arrow breaking is done. I don't think we're going to make one pass through the atmosphere. I think it's going to take more than one. Where is Kerbin? There she is. <laughs> That's kind of scary. That's like coming out of hyperspace. Alright, let's turn around the correct orientation. We can get rid of that. I would like to see our orbital info still. See it dropping down. Because we are we're in a ridiculously high orbit, so it's going to take a bit. But I don't want to burn up my ship more than I need to. I believe we can just let it go from here. So uh, I'll be back when we get our periapsis down to a reasonable level and we're actually returning home. Now, I realized I said I wasn't going to be crashing these engines into Kerbin anymore so I actually think I'm going to try to bring this whole thing 
down if I can. Um, I stage it like this. We'll see if this works. Um, if it burns up in the atmosphere, I guess it burns up in the atmosphere. We're coming in, like I said, real shallow, so I'm hoping it won't be an issue. Um, but we'll see, I guess. All right, so we're coming in again. I think this is going to be our final time around it. Actually, we've only gone around once, but the rate we're losing speed here will probably be all right. Um, I think I'm going to do a retro burn, too, to try to lose some of this fuel to make the ship lighter. I mean, we can't, you know, we're going to try to land the whole thing. We might as well. I didn't put a valve on this in order to burn, you know, be able to vent this stuff anyway, so we'll vent it the best way we know how. This should help with the re-entry speeds, too. Uh, at this point, even though it doesn't really matter, I'd rather not bust my solar panels, so... Let's try to get this thing down as intact as possible. I want to keep some of this fuel to kind of soften the blow once we get down to the surface, so... Let's keep an eye on our Delta V as well. Oh, we have a lot of Delta V. That information on the station was misleading, of course, because it was talking about the actual uh, moving the whole station. So we could have deorbited the whole station with that much Delta V, which we might do in the future. I might need to redo that station. I'm going to have to think about that. So I'm just going to keep on burning and burning. I'm hoping the connection here is strong enough. I kind of wish I'd remembered that I didn't want to bring these things down. It's just kind of like a little... Not exactly role-playing, I guess, but it's a little challenge that I'd like to make for myself, you know? No sense polluting Kerbin more than we have to. I mean, there's already all kinds of toxic rocket crap landing here. It doesn't need to be radioactive as well. avoid a lot of the re-entry heat here, it looks like. Let's go full thrust here. Let's see if we can land near these mountains. I'd like to land on the daytime side here for sure, so... We're already at almost non-re-entry effect speeds. It's going to be a pretty easy re-entry. I think I'll call it good pretty soon here. I'm gonna leave like 500 meters per second worth of delta V, maybe. Eh, let's leave like 200, 250. It doesn't need much. It's all weight. We don't have to worry about the parachutes snapping. All right, we're starting to really slow down here. I guess if I, if I had a ship that didn't even have a heat shield on it, this one does actually have a heat shield on it, but this would probably, if you had the Delta V, be a pretty safe way to come back. I must say. So I'm going to be paying more attention to the uh, atmospheric Delta V because that's what we really need to worry about. Leave that around 100. And engines cut out. Turn off our SAS and just let her drift home. Might not get any atmospheric effects at all, but we're still gonna land in the ocean, I think, which means this is probably gonna probably gonna break. Um going kind of fast to deploy parachutes, I would say. I don't know, like I know G forces do matter actually with with uh this this mod as well. Excessive g-forces will break stuff, so... Oh, we're gonna land in the ocean. That almost definitely means it's gonna break. That was a pretty meager re-entry there. Alright, so we drop this bad boy down... to like 300. Pull the chute. Didn't miss the land by much. That's too bad. Those are pretty big mountains there. Wow. 
I don't remember there being that many snow-capped peaks on Kerbin. Where are we, I wonder? I'll look when we, when we pull the chute, take a look at the map. Alrighty. And... Boom! Let's take a look at the map. So what are we looking at here? The graphical glitches. So this is the big, like, Russia continent. This is the one right before the Space Center. I gotcha. The fake Space Center is probably right near those mountains. It was near some big mountains. It's probably right over there somewhere. Make a trip out there sometime. Been there before. I haven't been there recently. I guess it's changed. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to end this episode here pretty much. So... Next time, we need to do some scouting to find some locations uh, about a third of the way around the planet in either direction from the Kerbal Space Center. I decided I am going to do some surface-based um, towers because I, I have enough satellites up in orbit. I'd like to, a different challenge of having a surface-based... Uh, there goes the nuclear engine. All that trouble and what happens. Oh, might as well lose everything else then too well sorry ocean hopefully that thing will just theoretically sink and not be a problem uh, but anyhow and we're gonna land upside down that'll be fun that's always great can we flip this thing back up and get the SAS to hold it I think we can um, anyhow uh, we're gonna do some scouting maybe we'll come scouting over this way I should actually figure out the coordinates roughly of where we are so I can just kinda remember in this big mountain range, we'll see it. I think the fake space center is like right in here. I don't remember exactly. That's not quite a third of the way around the planet, though, is it? Not even close. It's going to be more like over in this continent somewhere and then over there. But anyway, I'll figure out some spots to head out to and I'm going to design an aircraft. So I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.